Chia, what's good? Uh, my name is Dirtbag Dan. I'm here with Reverse Live. Hey! We uh, decided we were going to do a little companion podcast for our DMT experience video. I figure, like, if there's anything that we could talk a little bit extra about, it's it's the DMT experience. The Deemster! <laughs> one of the things that I said, uh, <coughs> I, don't, I don't think it was a part of the video, but one of the things that I remember saying in one of the post-battle interviews was that... Uh, a po do you hear me call it a post battle interview? Yes, the post battle with the cosmos interview. I was wondering um, what the fuck <laughs> you were talking about. In the post, I, like, uh, I, I believe we were calling didn't it. See that? I believe we were calling it launch the post pre launch and post launch video. So in the post launch video, one of the things that I said was, if you interviewed an astronaut like directly after he hit the ground, he would probably like have more to say a week later than that moment when he like is just touching earth for the first time. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that this kind of gives us an opportunity to like look back on that situation, which I find with DMT, like not only do you have like this usually like a, like a mind altering experience that like may change your perception of the world. But then there's also like a week later where you're still kind of like Yo, thinking about that. You know what I mean? Do you hear that buzzing? Yeah. What the fuck happened? It just all at once a buzzing started to happen. Yeah. Oh, never mind. It was just, it was, it was a fucking, uh, it's a headphone thing, not a, nah, it's not a video. Yeah. But, um, I find myself still like coming to grips with, with the visions that I had or yeah. the things that I seen and, and having a better understanding of it like later. Yeah. I noticed when I was like telling people about it afterwards, like while I was telling them shit, I was like remembering other shit that was happening. That's like, crazy about that because yeah. there's like it's in your head. You yeah, know what I mean? It's like, like you say certain things that like trigger other things and you'll be like, yo, actually, we were talking about because I was like in the thing I was talking about the strokes to the, the floating fucking helmet thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I was at work telling someone about it, uh, I was like, oh, yeah, I was like arguing about how people don't like the Angles album. And I was like, think that album's fire. And then like I was like, I don't remember talking about that on the video. But like, I don't even re remember that happening until I was talking about it at work. And then it kind of just like comes to you. You're like, oh, yeah, that's what we were talking about. But yeah, like it's weird. It's a strange drug. So this was my second uh, DMT experience. And my first DMT experience, it definitely like radically changed my perception of the world. Uh just on some like I, I, I've had a different perception of life and death, like having no having the knowledge that this is like a component that exists within your body that your brain is flooded with after you die. And then like, you know, literally feeling like I was transported to the center of the universe and like knowing that this is in every living thing, you kind of just like instead of I stopped feeling like, oh, like, you know, things die and started feeling more like energy is just transferred you know what i mean and then there's yeah. like a set amount of energy and you can't really like destroy or or create new energy you just kind of shift it around you know what i mean and this just happens to be like the form i'm in now or we're in now or whatever you know what i mean whether i'm Dude, like the individual or collective or whatever you know that actually is like kind of what i think too because i don't believe in like like not, not i don't like you explain it way better but yeah. I'm, I'm i have a way of being able to kind of like look back at that that's kind of always what i i don't know how to put like how you explain it is kind of what i always thought and that's why people you know how people have like deja vu or fucking like how there's people who think they're other people and like ki like kids who, past lives and shit yeah, like that yeah shit like that cuz like that shit's pretty crazy and it happens you know what i mean like i know people who aren't full of shit that have that it's happened to you know and if mean? you think like, about it like people probably lived lives of more substance like the further you go back in time and as like more people are created like that energy is spread thinner and thinner and thinner yeah. and that's why you just have like dim lights in <laughs> individuals there's and just some brighter people, lights yeah. in other individuals some people you know are just I mean? got <laughs> they got more yeah. of that that energy and and some people got less of that energy, you know what I mean? You know, so if you're stupid, you just might have not got so much energy. It's not your fault. Uh, you're you're but it did, like, it, it really did. And and one of the things I was going to say was is that I seen my wife's face and I seen my cat's face. And my cat had recently mm -hmm. passed away uh, the first time I did DMT. And those are just things that were, like, in my mind that just showed up kind of, like, in my visions. And uh, this last time around, I seen... Uh, a bit of ultra violence, I would say. I seen tits and blood. Oh, and I tried yeah. to like measure it in my mind, like why I, I seen these things. And I thought... It's probably because you're a badass, then. 
No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think what, what yeah, happened you're, you're was not, is kidding. that I had like this, I, like I had such a sunny perception of like what everything is like uh, from my first experience with DMT. That, uh, and then I think like, I feel like there was a bit of arrogance involved in this process, in the process of trying to capture it. Yeah, yeah. And you, like you, the you, fact that I was trying to observe the unobservable, like I needed to be checked. And that's yeah. why, like I said in the in the promo, I said I got bitch slapped by the cosmos because I really did feel like I was I, I was like checked by, you know, some kind of like cosmic energy that just be like, well, this isn't a game. Yeah, like yeah. it can be a game if you want it to be a game. It could be a game. But like you're not playing a game like you want to see shit and you want to look at the same like and you want to show everybody like it, it don't work like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I felt like. It had there. I had to know that if if this was everything, if this energy was everything in the world, that it was bad shit too. It wasn't just going to be the good. You know what I mean? And that ultimately, yeah. like this idea that I have that when you die, your brain is flooded with the DMT, and then you could live a thousand lifetimes in that five minute span that your brain is dying Facts. because because that shit felt like fucking. I was only in there for like five minutes. Felt like a half hour. Well, time minutes, is time like is relative, that. right? Like especially in your dream, you have a dream, you go to sleep for thirty seconds, you wake up, you feel like you did a day, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like in that respect, I feel like you could live an entire lifetime in your own head in that moment that you die, and the DMT floods yeah. your brain. And whether or not you're going to be happy, whether or not that's going to be your heaven or your hell, is based on because you're just capturing and collecting experiences in your mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like all your friends, all the friends you make, like they're all going to be there. So are the enemies. Yeah. You know what I mean? So is the bad shit. So is the karmic retribution. I, so like should, if you're going to that mo in your head, you're going to be living with everything. So if you choose to live right, then, then, you know, you're, you're faced with the right you did. If you choose to live wrong, you're faced with the wrong you did. Either way, it's all going to come out. Yeah. I think I need to do it with, like, out drink or without drinking. Or that something. was one thing that we were saying that, yeah. that I think that because you were drinking, your experience was your experience was dulled a bit. Yeah, it was kind of like, just kinda left like Earth. yeah, it was just kind of like, but it was more like I just looked at a painting and then, like, that shit was popping off. And then, like, yeah, but I didn't have no, like, deep, uh, like, you know, cosmic connection with anything well you see how i did this bro i, I, I stayed sober that's for like what i'm days, saying you like you like did like, the damn thing and i kind of just showed up and was like yeah okay and but i think that it's a valuable see, experience see. because i think a lot of people do what you do like yeah, I, yeah. i've been at like people's houses and they're like hey you want to do some dmt and i'm like nah yeah. <laughs> this is like not that's, the, how, that's how i do like, not the thing to just be fucking around with on a that's couch literally right how now i've you know? done every drug ever so it only makes sense that it would happen this way yeah and i and a i guy, knew and a guy named dirtbag dan gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> and i knew I that tell my kids that and they'll be like yo <laughs> <laughs> i think an important aspect uh, uh to talk about too is, is that the the gentleman that we're talking about creating this substance at the beginning of the video they do not sell it this isn't a thing that you can buy really like i don't know like y'all might know people that sell dmt but the people that i know that deal in in these kind of things it's a gift you give somebody you know what i mean it's not like a fucking thing you buy to do like for a party like they these guys when they feel the time is right they make a batch and then they distribute it um, to the people who they feel like deserve it and there's literally like, there's no barter involved in it. It's not a, they gift it entirely. Like it's not a thing where it's like you can buy this or like trade this or whatever. It's, it's for people who want to have that experience. You know what I mean? So like it, ultimately that's what you should be looking for in any of these kind of uh, hallucinogenic experiences is uh, mindfulness on the part of the person who's creating the substance because that is going to be the key to having a good experience no matter what you're taking you know what i mean whether it be lsd or, or mush even psilocybin mushrooms you can grow them wrong you know yeah so it's 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 important does that to, have anything to do with like bad trips is it like bad trips? yeah i'm sure it does i'm sure yeah. it does because i've I'm never sure had a bad trip on anything before. i've never had a bad trip either and that's why i think but that i'm, I'm also a good candidate very for like uh I don't give a fuck about much. So you're a like, roll with the punches type. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I don't. I don't really have a bad experiences of much things. 
Because even if it, the experience sucks, I'm probably like people watching and hating, and it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, like, no, and I, I, uh, I recognize that, and that's why, like, I, th- that was something I offered to you because I, I do, all, I do think, man, like, like I said, people just take this shit to fuck around, but like, it. It, I given the see, right circumstance, it yeah, can affect your. I could see that going left very fast. If, if you have like some type of imbalance at all, I think, like I wouldn't suggest fucking. Well, see, that's the shit. thing. I've never known or heard of anyone to have a bad experience, and I almost yeah. think that if you have an imbalance, it might correct your imbalance. You think so? By forcing you to, because it's not like the difference between like uh, something like mushrooms or acid, which could damage you permanently. If you have uh, already have mental dis- like issues, yeah. uh, be- chemical imbalances and stuff, because Cause they could push it over. Well, and and what you're doing yeah. is, is you're, you know, you're on drugs. It's like surgery when you're on DMT, it's like soul surgery. You're not that you're removed from your body and they Facts. fucking, and you work on yourself and then you fucking go back it's not like uh, my new album is called Soul Surgery. <laughs> <laughs> it's but it's not like uh, it's not like an experience where you're like I said, like the process of observing it, I think, caused me to have like a, a not a negative experience, but I needed to like it. it I went deeper down the rabbit hole because yeah. I was trying to observe it. I and think the you, unobservable, you were you know? a little more conscious of what was going on when you did the drug too than me. Like, okay. So I we put on I, a song for me. Yeah. I feel like you had like a, a destination you were trying to get to. I was. Right? And, and I was hundred percent. And I was just kind of visiting, you know what I'm saying? Like you were like there before, like you basically went back and you're like, Oh, I'm going to go try to do this. And I was just kind of like get my feet wet. with. This, See, you know? I was, and I wasn't looking for the same experience because yeah. I'm, I'm smart enough to know that you can't look for, the same experience with any kind of shit like this. Like you're going to get a different experience every time and you have to accept that it's not a repeat thing. You know what I mean? So, uh, I wasn't necessarily looking for like the same experience, but I was looking for some kind to provide some kind of new context for my life. I had moved myself into a position where, um, I'm comfortable in this house that I live in. And, and I have a lot of the things in my life that I worked my whole life for. And I had to like, re-establish my goals like what i wanted to do for yeah. myself in my head and that that was kind of my my main yeah sorry about that my main sorry. um uh focus with regards to doing this dmt and trying to like because i i you know it, much like most of the stuff in this world it kind of just like happens when it happens but like it happened to happen at a time where i was really considering like seeking it out because I felt like I, I wanted to provide that extra context for my life and kind of like I said like refocus myself yeah yeah and and I'm fucking focused dude I'm fucking focused like I'm, I'm writing damn focus I'm writing wah, wah, more wah, than ever I'm, I'm just I feel like I know what I want to do hey, so no, hey the verses you've been kicking me like in the car and such are pretty fucking fire I'm just happy head. I'm just happy that I feel like I'm at a place right now where I could start to be creative. And I think that the DMT did have a lot to do with that. Like Deemster. It's bro. It's, it's the, it's not fuck around shit. Like it's really like, it can be if you want to treat it that way. And, and remember this too, like, uh, no bad trips. You, You don't have a bad trip. You just come back. You're gone. You come back. You know what I mean? And then like, by the time you realize you're having a bad trip, you'll probably be back to reality. But I mean, I don't think you can. I don't yeah. think I, I've never known. Like I said, the one thing that like I was a concern I had was was I breathing when I started to like re <laughs> establish my like f- grip on reality. Yeah. And it was like a wave washed over me like, oh, bro. Yeah. Come on. You're bro, breathing. Bro, you've you're been good. breathing. You've been. You cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, uh, to break down the experience a little bit. Uh. You were you went to silence, right? Yeah, I just I just chilled. Which I, is the recommended thing, I think. So uh, so the difference between our experience is basically I was drinking before he wasn't. Are you weren't? Did you smoke did, either? Oh no, you know what? I ha, I did smoke. I was smoking. Yeah. Because I actually did DMT twice. Okay. I did it, and then I did Weren't it a week like later. Not blazing though to do one of our. I, the first time the I didn't blaze, time, which yeah. is ironic because I had a more powerful experience the second time, and I had blazed right before it. Oh. So the lack so, of. So, you so in retrospect, not smoking weed didn't really do a whole lot for uh, making it any more or less. So the and the, crazy. Weed, the weed escalated it. 
No, yeah, it did not at all. It just was no going to be what it was going to yeah. be. Like it went, I I think. I mean that my I feel like alcohol can affect it, but I think the way I'd say because our fucking experiences. No, a hundred percent. Because I feel like alcohol, you just have less. You're obs- you're in it, and you're just like whoa more than you're like why. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it's you. The more lucid you are, or I guess the more sober you are going in, the more lucid your experience. I think that would be. Maybe my uh, assessment, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's different for it's different for different people too. Yeah. That's the other thing. It's like it could have been we could have had the same conditions and had different experiences. Yeah, I was gonna say I wish I would have listened to music. That so you were say. silent. Well, look, I listened to music, and I actually music I don't think is the way to go because what happened was the minute the so. song stopped, I was back, and I wasn't ready. Remember, I stood up and I fucking sat back down again. Like so, real, I would have went for longer if I didn't have music. Put on a badass like fifteen minute mix. I was breathing. To I'd the say. to the beat, huh? That's what yeah. everyone was saying. It's like when the beat changed, I would like my breathing breathing would Put change. Put like or whatever. Juvie, huh? You know what I'm saying? Put that on there. DMX, what's my name? That'd be a good one. That's crazy. I don't think so. Maybe DMX, what my maybe? I don't know. Maybe that's really good weed. Um. Oh yeah. I would say. Uh, yeah. Pass that off screen. Shit. I would say. Uh, I listened to Paranoid Android, and it was a four or five minute song, and it wasn't long enough. But it, it definitely like affected my uh, perception of that song forever, for sure. Like I hear that song and I just and you're like DMT. No, I just like <laughs> I just like it's so I know it so well now. Like I know it better than I ever knew it before. Like I know every word and every break and every drop, and it's just like it's you know what I mean. Like I can feel that song now. It's yeah. Really, so it's good or bad? That's good. I mean, I, I like I said. It's it, good. It was anchored to it. I think the best situation is if you're like in a well, relatively well lit space, not because the darker it is, the less your mind has to work with as far as like making those geometric shapes. Do it like in the middle of the day outside. No, that's probably not the good idea. I would say like <laughs> sit in front of a painting with the lights on and fucking something you really like to look at basically and fucking, uh, be ready, because when you blow out that smoke, you're gonna leave. You know what I mean? That's that's have fact. someone, and that's Yo, the thing is, you I don't have. Uh, that's don't, that's true. When you blow that fucking smoke out, you're fucking gone. It's like, like you're just. You know, it was crazy. Because you need a launch partner. You, you like, need someone to take the the pipe from you and just set you down gently. You know he what told I mean? me that was gonna happen. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And then fucking, I did it, and now it was like, like as it was happening, I was like, Yo, no, no lie, it happened. Dan was right. My buddy that that walked me through it the first time, he had me doing like breathing exercises and shit like that, like fucking. Eh. That's extra. I don't need that. I do. I did. I did. I felt like <laughs> I felt like all of that shit. Like I'll tell you what, bro. When it comes to shit like that, like I'm not gonna. The the wisest thing I've learned in all my years is that I don't know shit. So like I'm not Facts. gonna be like, I don't need to do the breathing exercise. No, I probably that, let's do everything you say. Is good. Why is this the and then I'll decide. Dan don't know shit. <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> good shit. Good uh, <laughs> shit. You know, you just kind of like listen and take advice from those people, and then later, if you're like, "Oh, I don't need to do that," then don't do it. But I wasn't gonna like at all, kind of like shun that. You yeah, know no, I mean? for sure. Like, now I could see. Uh, I'm like glad you fucking you guys like everyone was here when I did it. I would definitely wouldn't do it with like a jackass that like. I didn't trust. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, you, like your fucking party friend, not oh, so much. Oh no, yeah, don't, man, yeah. It's because it's not like that guy. I mean, like your drunk driving friend. Don't pick him. I suppose anything could fuck with you if someone's like trying to fuck with you. You know what I mean? So like, definitely, yeah. Just show a. Hey, the moral of the story here, guys, is that uh, I think show it some respect if you're gonna do it. You know what I mean? Like, however that may be, like. Do you ultimately you're going to have an experience that is indicative of your intention, but exactly understand that it it deserves respect. So you should show it that respect. You know what I mean? Like fucking gateway to the cosmos, man. Like fucking. I will say that is easily the most um, visual drug you could do. (sighs) Yeah. Hands down. Shit's crazy. Yeah. I can't. It's hard for me to like grasp exactly what i see or what i've seen i'd be doing the acids too you know yeah 
And uh, the the Deemster takes a ju- the, a deucer. Well, over it's us, like so you could be like three hours of like tripping and seeing trails and things moving, or you could be like five minutes in fucking a <laughs> volcano. Like, oh, yeah, like, like just, on Mars. Dad, yeah, dude, it's just dancing like, with the wolf princess. Whatever, you know? bro. Like real, real life, you know. So. I hope this answered some questions for you guys. I hope this uh, uh, provided a little bit of extra context. You know what I mean? Like, um, I, I do feel like, uh, you know. I feel like there's gems in our shows. If you listen to the whole thing, you'll pick up like three yeah, live gems. There's, there was some shit. There was some shit I said there where I was like, yo, that was pretty wise, B. <laughs> Just put that on Instagram later. Remember that? Yeah, some drunk ass housewife could turn it into like one of those meme things. A meme a drunk housewife will turn it into a Mimi. <laughs> All right, guys. My name is Dirtbag Dan. This is Reverse Live. We hope you enjoyed our DMT video. Uh, shouts out to the Moist Mob for production. Beautiful job, guys. The, um, the moistest of mobs. Uh, and, uh, you know, tune in for more episodes of the Dirtbag Dan Show. Approaching episode 100. You bitch.